few years ago, my wife bought me an old technology book from the 70s that described how one day everyone would have a computer and they'd communicate with each other over satellite links. Well, they got half of that prediction right. Computers have evolved and become smaller and affordable, whether they look like a laptop, a tablet, a phone, or even a smartwatch. And yes, these devices communicate with each other, but they don't use satellites. In fact, if the water in this Olympic-sized swimming pool represents the volume of data passing every second over the global internet, then this bucket would be about the amount of data that passes over satellites. The rest of it passes over optical fiber. Fibers stretch around your neighborhood, across your city, across your country, and right around the world. You might be surprised to learn that each fiber is thinner than a human hair. But using today's technology, we can transmit almost 20 terabits per second over a fiber that crosses the Atlantic and perhaps even the Pacific Ocean. Information on that fiber will travel from Europe to North America and back in less than a tenth of a second. Optical fiber feeds internet growth in many of the areas that you're probably familiar with. Router interconnect, mobile backhaul, residential broadband, and biggest of all, data center interconnect. So how does this miracle of optical communication actually happen? In this lecture, I try to demystify the physics and the technology behind optical transmission. Now, it'll help if you can drag up some of the high school physics you were taught, but I also use simple experiments that illustrate some optical fundamentals. All of these experiments are chosen to be safe for you to try with your kids, to give them ideas for science projects, or perhaps get them interested in the essential world of optical communications. I hope you'll join me.